I worked on improving my own eyesight. As, as I got into improving my eyesight with Bates, I realized that um, I, I got in initially because I had uh, a, astigmatism and nearsightedness, myopia, so that I can't couldn't see in the distance. I wore my glasses for seeing in the distance. My vision was bad enough so that um, at 20 feet, looking at an eye chart, which has a big letter at the top, usually an E or a C, mm -hmm. um, I couldn't read that at 20 feet. Um, wow. So, so wow. a person, yeah. I don't use glasses or contacts at all whatsoever. My vision's really, really good. Um, and I typically I'm teaching people. Um, uh, well, it's it's not uncommon to get a person's vision to twice as good as normal. Wow. On part, they could read. Um, person would normally read at 20 feet. Excuse me. What they yeah, what they would normally read at 20 feet with normal eyesight person with that's improved their vision with the base method could read it at 40 feet so that the vision could get twice as good and that's very very common wow. yeah so so even with people who are not using glasses or contacts you can improve your eyesight from there and that and i really recommend that to people because then they learn what is it that causes the vision to get better what causes it to get worse and they could have good better than normal eyesight their whole life long so even when a person gets into their 40s and 50s and their vision drops off for a close-up vision, you know, doctors will, uh, optometrists, ophthalmologists will tell people that um, it's normal for their vision to drop off when they get to 40 or 50. Um, you don't have to have that happen. And um, you could have really, really good eyesight until you die. Um, right now, one of my oldest uh, uh, students, she's 97. And she improved her vision by almost half in the last couple of months. Uh, and she's only been taking classes infrequently with me uh, since maybe about March or April, somewhere around there. Yeah. And she just brought me a letter from her optometrist saying that he was really surprised that her vision had improved. She's 97. Wow. She's got. Uh, wow. yeah. 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 So, so then I think a lot of our viewers would ask, what is kind of the science and what is the what is quote unquote mainstream I science wrong about that the Bates method gets right. Yes. You know what I was going to show you. Um, it, it, I'm, I'm going to turn on my camera again. So maybe you can get a screenshot of this mm -hmm. and, and it's just going to be. Um, let me see if it comes on there. So let me see. I'm going to try to put it on yep, so you can kind of get that. Oh, there you that's go. a that's a that's an illustration from uh, uh, one of book, which is abridged. It's not his original book. Um, it, it comes from this book, um, The Bates Method for Better Eyesight Without Glasses. This is typically the one that you can get online on Amazon and everything, that uh, complete original book um, um, that I showed right now, that, that I showed you, there's there's muscles, there's six muscles on an eye that we normally think of as the ones that turn our eye from right to left, up and down, kind of if we're, if we're holding our head. Those are the muscles that uh, Dr. Bates experimented with. He, he did a lot of experiments at the, be at the beginning of the 20th century that he showed scientifically that if he cut, for example, the recti, the, the, uh, the, the straight muscles that are on the sides and on the top and bottom of the eye, if he cut those, an animal or a person could not get myopic. They oh, could no. not get nearsighted. The only way that a person could get nearsighted if those were, muscles were attached and they were straining. So he did all kinds of uh, mm -hmm. tests with animals, with rabbits, with fish, with dogs, with cats, um, a, a, a lot of different animals. He, in, they used to, he used to do some surgeries where people had their eyes turned in or a wandering eye, where he, and that's a common thing that people, that doctors still do where they cut those eyes and then they re, reattach them so that they're pulling a person's eyes so that they're lined up. Mm -hmm. the, the, and so the, the science, to come back to your question, in, in regular medicine, they think that there's two uh, common theories of how, how vision works, um, that as a person gets older, the, the lens hardens and that that causes people to have problems with reading as they get older. Mm -hmm. And so they, they talk about the ciliary muscle. It's a small, tiny little muscle. This is the one that you had, uh, that I had talked to you about last week. Mm -hmm. um, little tiny little muscle that's attached to the lenses. That that one is in regular medicine, they think that that's the one that 
uh, either stretches and thins out the lens or relaxes and, and makes it thicker so that um, that's how a person sees. Also, they talk about people with myopia are normally uh, familiar with being told that their eyeball is elongated, that it's yeah. too long to see clo correctly in the distance. The reason why it's elongated is because of the external muscles, because of those recti. Um, when a person has astigmatism, those muscles are just not pulling equally on all sides. So they're, it's kind of like pulling a, a water balloon from one end or the other. You, you, could, you could imagine if you're pulling a water balloon, tugging on it from, from the, the nipple of it, that it takes it out of shape of, of being perfectly spherical. The muscles in the eye are supposed to change the shape of the eye, depending on whether a person's looking close up or in the distance. So for example, a person, so the, the eyeball that's elongated and that is in the wrong shape for distance vision is in the perfect shape for looking at stuff close up. So I would bet, so, so you, you, you're you myopic, uh, Jerry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have, I'm, I'm your six. Six. myopic. Like a minus six? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I've worked with people uh, more than twice uh, that degree. I've worked with people with minus 14 and, and got them to where they're not using glasses. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'll bet that, and you don't have a correction for a close-up reading. Um, I do. I downloaded those two, um, those two ones you sent me. Oh, okay. No, I'm saying uh, on your glasses, you, you just use them for the distance vision. If yeah, you take exactly. them off. I don't have bifocals. Right, right. So, so your eyes, we could say that your eyes are in the wrong shape for looking in the distance, but they're mm -hmm. in the right shape for looking at stuff close up. So you could read a book, read a newspaper, read a magazine. Uh, if you pick up anything that has text on your desk, you're able to read it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so your eyes are in the correct shape for reading stuff close up. With normal vision, the eyeballs are shifting between being elongated and being more spherical, rounded, all the time, very, very quickly, unless you're wearing glasses or contacts. Because mm -hmm. when you're wearing glasses or contacts, you're actually training your eyes to stay in the elongated shape when you look through that lens at stuff in the distance. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, so you know, there's the there's a common saying with a lot of different things. If you use a crutch, you get used to the crutch. Um, that you know, glasses and contacts. Every every optometrist, every ophthalmologist knows that as soon as they put glasses contacts on a person, that their vision is going to get worse. You don't put glasses don't fix uh, imperfect sight. You put them on, and they're a crutch, so you can get by with the disability. But the disability is still there. As soon as you take off the glasses, you see that your vision is still blurred. And as a matter of fact, once a person starts using glasses or contacts, a week after you've started using glasses or contacts, your vision when without the glasses or contacts is not as good as it was before you started using glasses or contacts. Your vision gets worse with glasses or contacts. Um, so yeah, that, that's one of the things. What, what, one of the things that you had mentioned last week when um, we were setting up this, inter this interview for today, that you wanted to ha have us walk through some things that your viewers can actually do to improve their eyesight. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna walk everybody, I'm gonna walk you through um, uh, doing palming. I'm gonna walk you through it. Mm -hmm. And what I'm gonna be checking is to see if it gets you to relax. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that happens when people read the Bates book is like I did. I read Bates and uh, he says in there, you know, that palming's great, that it works for most people, that most people are able to really rest and relax when they palm. Um, the thing is that every Bates technique can be done incorrectly and not every Bates technique works on everybody because if, like for example, when I first learned uh, palming, I tried really, really hard to be the best palmer there was because I, I really wanted to get good at baits and uh, the baits techniques. And my vision would get worse when I would palm. Mm -hmm. And then I would think, oh, okay, I'm just not doing it wrong. Let me try harder. And my vision would get worse. And it wasn't until I learned other techniques that actually got my vision to, to get better and for, to learn how to relax that I was able to apply palming. And now palming is something that I'm really, really good at and that, I'll, that I could teach to people. Um, because it, it benefits me and I know how to use it. So it's not just the mechanics of doing palming. So let's have you, uh, you, you, you got the email that, that I sent over the, the sheets with the, 
the different sizes of letters yeah. on there? Yeah. Okay. So which one do I open up? The one that just has the one C clear letters or the one that has three of them? Let's have you open up the big one first. Okay. And um, because I'm gonna have you take a look at it without your glasses. All right, sounds good. So for those of you watching, I'm gonna share my screen. And um, I'm gonna, there we go. So I'm gonna share my screen. It's gonna get all trippy real quick, guys. But um, here we go. And so this is what I'm seeing, people. This is my yeah. screen. And that just has my website on the bottom there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. So so here so here what we what we're looking at is this is just a sheet that has letters that start out bigger and get smaller and smaller and smaller until you get to the bottom of the line that says all day long. Mm -hmm. So. Um, because we're sharing it, I can't see Jerry anymore, but we're going to work with this anyway. Mm -hmm. What I want you to do is, so you're going to take off your glasses, Jerry, and you're just mm -hmm. going to get a baseline. You're just going to see what your vision is like without your glasses right mm -hmm. now. And How far do I stand else. away? Huh? How far do I stand away? How, how long do you stand to wait? How far do I stand away from the computer? Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, so at... At the distance that you're sitting from your screen, mm -hmm. uh, without your glasses, what's the smallest line that you could read on this sheet? Um, I could read the third line from the top, so letters. Okay. okay, okay. So what we're doing here is we're just getting a baseline mm -hmm. at the particular distance at which you're seeing, okay, uh, at, at which you're sitting, you can read the letters line. And I want, mm -hmm. and besides being able to read that letters line, I want you just to get an idea of what things look like, how black the letters look, what lines look like below that line that has letters you're just kind of getting an idea of okay when i take off my glasses this is what things look like mm -hmm. on this sheet at this particular distance okay mm -hmm. okay so you're just getting a baseline so now we're going to have i'm going to walk you through some uh different techniques while using palming so uh, i i can't actually see you mm -hmm. so uh, i'm so I will, you. I will make my screen not shared now so we can we can do this. You can see me, yes. and I'm still gonna have the sheet in front of me. Yeah. So. Okay. Perfect. So people can watch you. This is this is a good idea. Okay. What I'm gonna have you do is you're gonna cover your eyes with the palms of your hands, not with your fingers, mm -hmm. and you're just gonna rest your your and you're gonna go ahead and do that. Go ahead and cover your eyes with the palms of your hands. Do I cross them or do I go like this? So if you cross your fingers just a little bit over your forehead, mm -hmm. just like that, that might be a little bit more comfortable. Just this, and and this really has to do with comfort. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see. So you're 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 kind of cupping your your palms, and really what you're doing with putting your palms over your eyes is blocking out all the light, and you have your eyes closed. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Now I want you to check for something. Yeah, whatever way is more comfortable for you. Yeah. Okay. In fact, this way is actually better. Interesting. Okay. Okay, and and this is an important thing that I want to point out to all of your viewers that everybody might do this just a slightly different way. Mm -hmm. It has to do with how you're comfortable. Um, for our purposes, you're holding up your elbows, but sometimes I tell people that they could just put their elbows down onto their desktop so that they can oh, walk for a longer period of time. Um, Sometimes people can put a, a folded towel or a couple of pillows on their desktop or in their lap just to be able to palm for a longer period of time. I'm gonna actually have you palm for about three minutes here and I'm gonna walk you through what we're doing. Okay, sounds good. Um, what I'm gonna do then is I'm actually gonna sit down. I was standing up, but I'm gonna sit okay. down so okay. my palms now can rest on the on the desk. Okay, so now and I'm gonna do Exactly, mm -hmm. have you tilt, tilt that down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So now it's okay. better. So now at least I know my arms are gonna get tired. Yes. So, I'm setting a timer here. Mm -hmm. And the first, the primary thing that you're doing when you're palming is resting. Resting, okay. okay. You're resting your eyes, you're resting your mind. And this mm -hmm. is a huge, huge component of how Bates works. Dr. Bates talks about how a person with imperfect vision is using their mind incorrectly. And I'm gonna teach you how to steer your mind, how to direct your mind so that you relax. Mm. Okay. Wow. Okay, so when you're palming, I want you to, if with your eyes closed and with your hands over your eyes, I want you to describe to me what you see, whether it's completely black or whether you see lights or shapes or any colors. Yeah, so I do see maybe a little bit of light come through, but it's mostly black. And then um, it's kind of this, maybe you see little 
little, maybe like, I don't know how to describe them, like flashes of circular. Yes. Right, right. Anytime, so this is really a good diagnostic. If a mm -hmm. person doesn't see perfectly black and, and they're seeing like these little flashes that you're talking about, mm -hmm. sometimes people describe them as colors or lights or shapes. Uh, sometimes they're floating by in their field, even though the person has their eyes closed and they're palming, they're seeing these different images. When a person is seeing all of those, that's an indicator that you're experiencing mental and physical strain. Mm. Okay. Okay. So it's just a diagnostic. Now, mm. I want you to check as you're looking at those, I just want you to bring your attention. So you're looking with your mind's eye in a sense. Mm -hmm. I want you to bring your attention to any of those lights or shapes and just let your attention go from one to another and also go to wherever your visual field is blackest. Where is mm. it the most black? Okay. Okay. I just am um, focusing on sort of the blackest part. You kind of almost have to, in my experience, you have to find it within the spheres, or not the spheres, but the yeah. field of all this light. Yeah. And, and what I want you to do is just look around, continually compare where it's blackest in your visual field and mm -hmm. where it's not as black. Just letting very casually let your attention go from one to another. You don't have to hold on to the black. Mm -hmm. As a I matter of fact, yeah, you, as a matter of fact, anytime a person's uh, making any kind of effort, they're doing the wrong thing. I see. One thing I've been doing is I just kind of move my eyes around inside. And sometimes yes. when I move my eyes around, just slowly, of course, and but deliberately, I, yeah. I see more dark. Yes, yes, exactly. And that's what you want to move towards. You want to have, you, you want to relax in a way you want to do shifting this is called mental shifting where you're letting your attention go from the blacker to the lighter to to the blackest part or just letting your attention very casually move that's called shifting and you could do it mm -hmm. mentally or with your eyes open mm -hmm. shifting is a bates technique and right now you if your attention is just moving from one part of your visual field to another just very casually that's you doing shifting and that is a really good thing to do mm -hmm. okay Wow. Now, there's another way of doing shifting. I want you to imagine a, a letter J, so the first letter of your name, okay? Mm -hmm. And I want you to imagine that uh, you're you're drawing it the way you would if you were writing your name, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, when you normally draw your or, or write your name, Jerry, do you write it in cursive or do you write it in block letters? Uh, block letters. Okay. So describe the J to me that you would draw. Yeah, so with my eyes, I would go. Would write, yeah, yeah. While you continue palming. Yeah, with my eyes, I would go from the left to the right. Then I would move back a little left, but towards the middle. And then I would go down, and then I would curve up a little. Yeah. And what I want you to do is, I want you just to imagine drawing a letter J for for the first letter of your name. Draw mm -hmm. it a few times. Just imagine that you were watching yourself draw the letter J. Mm -hmm. Okay. As you're doing that, I want you to let me know whether it feels comfortable or uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, I think when I'm drawing the the loopy or the hook part of the J, it feels more comfortable. Okay. Go ahead and just make a bunch of loops, the loopy mm -hmm. part of the J. Just make a bunch of those. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I'm actually right now, I'm testing a couple of different Bates techniques to see which ones get you to, to relax the most. Mm -hmm. I want you to put all of that aside and I want you to just rest for a second, mm -hmm. just take a break. Mm -hmm. And um, have you ever taken a nice vacation? Um, not for a while, but yeah. <laughs> when you were, any time in your life, it could be any time in your life, mm -hmm. with your family or friends, um, did you go anywhere nice? Um, I would actually gonna have to think about this. It's been a while, but yeah, okay. I mean, I Let's have see. in the past. Can you imagine? Have you ever been to Hawaii or any tropical island? Unfortunately, that's the one part of the world I've not been to. I've never been to anything really tropic. Okay, what's a what's a nice place that you've been to? Um, I, I guess maybe Atlantic City. Okay. So on the coast there, is that New Jersey or still New York? Um, I think Atlantic City's in New Jersey. Okay. Um, so you were out on the beach there? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Um, at the casinos or where, where were you at? Um, on the beach at night, which okay. actually apparently wasn't supposed to happen. You're not supposed to go to the beach at night, but I went anyways. Uh -huh. What ha When you were there, and w as you think about it right now, being on the beach in New Jersey, is that mm -hmm. a pleasant memory? Yeah, I would say so. Okay. Now, I want you to compare how you feel when you're picturing that scene. And I want you to compare. I want you, we're just going to like create an imaginary scene here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have you imagine that you get on a plane and that you actually get to go to Hawaii. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that you get to go. Do you like beaches and tropical places? Yeah, yeah. I do. I mean, I just, I was, I filmed with my friend in Santa Monica. So I traveled to Santa Monica a lot. Okay. Okay, cool. I want you to imagine that you're out on a tropical beach and um, that you're just getting to roll there and enjoy it. You could be walking where the sand is wet. You could just be sitting on a towel. You could be have your feet in the water, um, small, comfortable waves. You could imagine that a palm tree is overhead so that it's putting you in shadow if you want to be in the shade. Mm -hmm. um, what would feel better for you, being in the shade or being in the sunshine? Um, probably being in the sunshine. Okay. I want you to check. I want you to imagine that you're in the sunshine there at that beach. And I want mm -hmm. you to notice how your body feels right now. If you imagine yourself being in the sunshine. Um, I think the first thing my body feels when I imagine myself in the sunshine is I, my body wants to get more comfortable than it was before. So uh -huh. I automatically stretch down my legs a little. Okay. Now, I want you to imagine that you're in the shade of a palm tree. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I want you to notice what your body feels like when you picture yourself in the shade. Um, I guess maybe the, the same thing. I mean, it, it seeks to get more relaxed, but partly it's just because I'm wearing kind of a dress shirt. So the dress shirt's pulling on me a little. <laughs> Which one feels more relaxed? Uh, imagine yourself in the shade or in the sunshine on the beach? Probably in the shade, it's actually even more relaxed. Okay, so this is an important thing. I'm just touching on some very simple things that you could do to improve what you're imagining. Okay, mm -hmm. so here we have you imagining yourself being at a pleasant situation, being on the beach, on a tropical beach. But I'm having you picture yourself either in the sun or in the shade and checking to see which one makes you feel better. Okay, mm -hmm. now in while you're in the shade, I want you to check to see if if you imagine that you're on the dry sand or if your feet are in the water, which feels better? I think it's probably better like kind of wet sand. So sand that maybe occasionally has water come by. Yeah. So it's the sand is more firm. It's cooler. It's exactly. not hot. Like, okay. Perfect. Okay. So I just want you to imagine that you're just hanging out there and I want you to check next to see if you feel more comfortable if you're alone there or if the best person in the world that could be near you was there, which one feels better? If you have the company of your best friend, favorite person, or if you don't, check to see which feels better. Probably uh, company of favorite person. Okay, okay. So I want you to imagine that they're just by you and that you're either talking or silent, whatever is more comfortable for you that the two mm -hmm. of you are just hanging out mm -hmm. okay there's the sound of the birds there's the sound of the waves lapping on the shore you might hear some of the wind rustling the, the palm fronds up in the palm tree and you're just comfortable you're relaxed you're on vacation and you just get to enjoy being there okay mm -hmm. okay and i want you to notice what your body feels like when you're picturing yourself there on vacation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to have you uncover your eyes, open your eyes. Okay. And then take a look at the C clear letters page. Is there any difference? Yeah, this is actually surprising, but I can see down to line five from the top now. Wow. So let me actually, I will, I will share my screen guys. So you guys know what I'm talking about, but it's actually a noticeable difference. So I was only able to see this, but now when I first opened my eyes and I was really relaxed, I could see here. Now I'm back to this, but this is better than before. Yeah. Like I can see line four now. Yeah. Yeah. So have you switch back to the screen so I can 
see you again. Sure. So I'm going to unshare my screen. Yeah. So, so here, your vision improved because I was guiding your mind to when your mind relaxes, your body features relax. Relax. Mm -hmm. Think about if you were to think about a friend, somebody who, or a comedian that makes you laugh, uh, and you think about a funny joke that they told you, till a, a person will smile or they're kind of giggle. Okay, so that if a person about a pleasant thing, their body, their muscles actually tighten up as if they were having that same experience. This, all, this doesn't happen only with the muscles around the mouth. It happens with all the muscles in our body, including the muscles around our eyes, okay? Mm. So this is what actually happened to you. We weren't working on your eyeball. We were working on your mind. Move what you were imagining so that it was something that was more pleasant, more enjoyable, okay? And by doing that, we actually had you palm for longer than five minutes, but I saw that you were comfortable, so I kept on walking you through it. And, mm -hmm. and I was also doing it so that your viewers can see what was going to happen. By having you palm and imagine something pleasant and enjoyable, you had a, an improvement of a couple of lines on the sheet that you were looking at. Yeah. And then you mentioned that when you first opened your eyes, you were able to see down to the fifth line, and then you noticed that your that your vision got a little bit worse so that it came up a little bit. That's when your, your mind is going back to its normal state of making an effort, mm. of being tense, of being tight, okay? So what I would have you do is you close your eyes again and palm, mm. palm again, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now this time you, you get to teach your viewers here. I want you to first check to see what your visual field looks like when your eyes are closed and you're palming. Yeah, so the first thing that Carlos taught is you pay attention to the visual field, notice if there's any flashes of light. And the first time when I did this, for all the viewers who are tuning in, the first time when I did this palming, I noticed just maybe one um, big field of flashing kind of just on and off. But this time I actually noticed maybe three or two distinct lighter spots. So it's changed from last time, which is something I never noticed before. Normally, even when I'm sleeping or when I'm closing my eyes and I just notice one um, flashing field that kind of, it's almost like a planet that's moving away from you as you're sailing on a ship away. So it's, it's interesting to see three kind of um, fields right now. And then the second thing Carlos taught is once you notice this field, look for the darkest area. And it might help if you just deliberately, slowly, calmly move your eyes a little bit and search. And still, like last time, it tends to be more on the right side of my visual field that it's darker. Yeah. And, and this is pure, this is kind of like a diagnostic of just getting an idea of what, is, what do things look like in my mind's eye when my eyes are closed and I'm palming. And if mm -hmm. the visual field is completely, perfectly black, your vision will be perfectly normal. Or better than normal. Mm -hmm. If you're seeing see flashing that. lights, if you're seeing flashing lights or colors or shapes drift, drifting by, if it's not a perfectly black field, if it has gray areas, then you're experiencing some kind of mental strain. And so this is a way of kind of getting an idea where am I at? Just from palming, you might notice that it gets blacker and blacker and blacker, that the flashing lights begin to diminish and 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 dim out. Yeah. So so if, if we have you just imagining again, being on a tropical beach, being there with your, your favorite person, standing in the shade on the hard, wet sand. And I want you to notice what your body feels like when you're picturing yourself in a pleasant scene, okay? Yeah, the one thing I definitely notice is that my body wants to breathe better, which is good. It wants to do yes. more diaphragmatic breaths, which I know is it wants to relax. Yes. Um, if I, I can't see your whole body, I can just kind of see the top of your shoulders and your head. But if I was, if it's easy for me to see that all of a sudden, when you relax, your breathing becomes relaxed. So that, so this is an interesting thing. I mentioned that when you relax, all the muscles in your body relax and they work better. Your diaphragm 
relaxes so that you're not holding your breath. Typically, when a person's vision is imperfect, there's problems with their breathing and they don't even know. Mm -hmm. But if, as they relax, the diaphragm relaxes and then the breathing just becomes its natural, normal rhythm, it goes into that natural, normal rhythm. This is what you're noticing that your breathing got easier as you relaxed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now uh, go ahead and again, picturing yourself out in, in Hawaii or that tropical beach. You're there with your favorite person. And you're just calm. You're comfortable. Nothing that you have to do. You just get to relax and enjoy the scene. Now I know that Jerry's relaxing here, and that you that you've gotten a good good amount of relaxation again. Go ahead and uncover your eyes and take a look again at the sheet, at the 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 the, 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 the letters on your on your screen. Let me see. So it's about the same as last time. I, I do see the fourth line pretty clearly. The fifth line wasn't as clear as the first time when I opened my eyes, but I definitely, yeah. the fourth line is now about where the third line was before. The third yeah. line is basically clear. I mean, I have a little astigmatism that I see on this third line, but the fourth line is where the third line used to be in clearness. I mean, yeah. so the fourth line is where the third line used to be in clearness. Yeah. So, so this, this palmy that we did here, I walked part, one of the big things in working with people on improving their eyesight is that I'll, I, I get to watch you. So, so mm -hmm. it's easily done, you know, on a Skype or on a, on a live uh, internet session. So this is one of the reasons why I'm able to do sessions with people all over the world by mm -hmm. Skype or something like that. But I'm working with people in person also so that I can watch what they're doing. And I'm checking whether my instructions are getting you to relax or the, whether they're making you more tense. Mm. There's ask questions that I'm asking you and I get to watch you to see if you breathe, if your shoulders go down, if you look more comfortable. Um, this is one of the big, big things in that um, when people pick up the Bates book or they read about Bates and stuff, they think, oh, okay, I should just do palming because that's supposed to work. I mentioned earlier that when I first did palming, I did it completely wrong because I was trying really, really hard to make palming work for me. And my vision got worse with palming. Mm -hmm. um, not that it wasn't a permanent worseness. It just got worse because I was so tense while I was first palming. And luckily the person that, that was working with me told me, don't palm anymore, just stop palming until I learned how to relax using other Bates techniques. And that's that's one of the big key things. Um, Bates says that all the techniques for improving errors of refraction are merely ways of getting the person to rest or relax. He uses rest and relax in, in a couple of different uh, areas very synonymously. Um, here we did this one particular uh, Bates technique. And actually while you were, while you had your hands on your face and you were palming, I was, testing a couple of different Bates techniques that you can use when a person's eyes are closed. Um, the second time that we did it here, we didn't have you palm for as long as the first time, but a person can palm as many times as they, they want to throughout the day. And it's kind of like taking a shower for the stress that builds up in the body, okay? Mm. Most people know that if they get out into their garden, and they get sweaty and, and dirty and muddy, they can go in and take a bath or a shower to wash off the, the grime on the outside of their body. Unfortunately, most people do not have any good techniques for, re for releasing the tension that builds up in our body on the inside. And you want to have uh, techniques, skills, methods for releasing the tension inside. You know, doing doing Bates techniques is, is good. Doing yoga, going running, going swimming, doing gardening. Anything that releases tension from your body and from your mind will actually help your vision. I've had people uh, call me up and tell me, you know what? I noticed that when I go to my yoga class, I take my glasses off. I put them by my mat. I go through my one hour yoga class. And at the end of the class, I notice that my vision is better. And they say, mm -hmm. what's, what's going on? And I say, yeah. It's that your body is relaxing, plus you're taking the glasses off, okay? Just from simply taking the glasses off, I, I, I'd recommend for all of your, your viewers to do this experiment at home. Mm -hmm. At the end of your workday, when you come home or on a weekend, take your glasses or your contacts off and just 
use any um, uh, book cover or any, if you have a, an eye chart, uh, you could use a magazine or a newspaper, anything that has different size uh, text on it. You take a look at it when you first uh, take off your glasses and contacts, exactly what you and I did today, Jerry, just to get a baseline of what your vision is like. And then for the next half hour to an hour, just go about your normal duties at home without reading, without worrying about anything, just, just resting, you know, just kind of chilling out at, at, your, at your home. And then at the end of the half hour of the hour, come back and take a look at the sheet at the same distance. And I have a prediction whether your vision will be better or worse. If you're, if you're experiencing pain or tension or what people call eye strain around your eyes without your glasses or contact, your vision is gonna be worse. But if you relax, if you're at ease and you're comfortable, your vision is going to get better just from having taken off your glasses and going without them for a period of time. Mm -hmm. um, you obviously don't want to do this if you're going to be operating heavy machinery. So if you're driving or anything like this, right? Yeah. You want to keep safe. Um, however, a person can improve their vision so that they decrease their prescription on their glasses or their contacts so that their vision gets better and better and better. And at, at some point, you're decreasing your prescription so that you're going from, say, a minus point minus uh, 1.0 prescription to zero and that your vision's fine and, mm -hmm. and that it's and that you continue continue to improve your eyesight um, without your glasses. So it's it's a matter of learning what how to relax and what it feels like. So for example, right now, Jerry, if you just close your eyes without palming, can you remember being at the beach? Yeah, I can. Okay. One thing that I want you to notice is that when I first ha started having you do the palming, it was hard for you to bring to mind a pleasant vacation. You remember yeah, that? true. That's because our memory is intimately connected with our eyesight. When our memory is not so good, our vision is not so good. I know, though, that you've done pleasant and enjoyable things in your life. And as you relax and you start bringing those to mind, you start bringing other, it's easier to remember other pleasant and enjoyable things. And you just want to get into that habit. This is kind of like if you're driving down a freeway here in, in Southern California, they have the little bumps on a freeway so that if you go over too far in your lane to the left, you start hitting the bumps and that reminds you, okay, I got to, you know, correct my course. If you hit the bumps on the right side of the lane, you can correct your course. And eventually you become good enough of a driver so that you're not hitting the bumps in your lane, on the sides of your lane. And you could just drive through a freeway lane without hitting the bumps. Whenever our vision is imperfect, whenever we're experiencing eye strain, whenever we have myopia or farsightedness or astigmatism, that's our body letting us know that we're hitting the bumps on the side of our lane. The way you correct what your mind is doing is you steer it into doing to remembering or feeling something pleasant and enjoyable. Okay. So if you close your eyes again, and if you remember yourself being in Hawaii, so now it's easier for you to bring that scene up because I've had you practice here a couple of times. Mm -hmm. okay. I want and you to notice. Other, <laughs> oh, sorry to interrupt, but the other thing that it really has helped is even if I'm not bringing up that image, it's easier for me to bring up other images of the beach that, that help too. Yes, exactly, exactly. Once you start training your mind to think of pleasant and enjoyable things, things that put you at ease, the body has a preference for that. Mm -hmm. But when we get into um, the habits of making an effort to clear things up, making an effort to understand, um, making an effort to see more clearly. You'll see people squint and try to make things clear up. That's when they're doing all the wrong stuff. And really a big major part of my uh, uh, work with people is teaching them when they're doing the things that make their vision better and when they're doing the things that make their vision worse and teaching them how to distinguish between the two. So for example, if you close your eyes for a second and picture yourself in Hawaii, okay, noticing how that feels. How your body feels. Now I want you to open your eyes and take a look at that chart that you had there on, the, on, on your screen. Okay. When you're looking at that chart, 
Do you feel the same as when you were picturing yourself in Hawaii? <laughs> no, nah, I see where you're going, but definitely not. Yes, yes. When you look, so what is it that you notice? Tell your viewers, how do you know? What is it that you feel? Um, I just feel it's either blank or just even almost a sense of dread. Dread, yes. Now think about this. Is the sense of dread like being relaxed when you're on a beach? Absolutely not. Right. The state of imperfect sight is when the mind is, like in your case, in a state of dread. When the mind is in a state of distress. Bates called this mental strain. Okay. But you, so what we're doing here is teaching you that you have control how to steer your mind. One way to steer your mind into something pleasant is just to close your eyes for a second and go to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now notice if you picture yourself on the beach, your favorite person is there with you. You're in the shade of a palm tree. You're on the sand where it's more firm and it's wet. You're breathing now. <laughs> so all of these ha things happen because you're relaxing because of where you're, what you're imagining. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then again, if you open your eyes and noticing what it's like, what you feel like when you look at the letters. Yeah, it's going to, it's going to take a, a while to get negative feelings because part of the vision chart is that white, that super white and black contrast. You're so used to getting your vision tested and feeling like, oh, yes. my goodness. Yes. The oh, my goodness feeling is the feeling of being in a test that you know you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. If, you're, if, you, if you were to go into a test in school and you know you didn't study and you know it was a subject that you hated, how comfortable would you feel taking that test? Mm -hmm. Okay. Whereas if you were going in to and so, somebody said, hey, uh, Jerry, do you know how to do a, 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 a video on YouTube? How easy would that be for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that you're more and more comfortable doing something that is easy for you. One of the things that I tell people is when you look at letters or numbers and your vision is imperfect, you're going into something like a state of dread, like what you do, you mentioned right now, that you're, you're in a state of mental strain. This is what Dr. Bates calls it. When your mind is in a state of mental strain, your body is in a state of tension, okay? It's your body and your mind are in a state of distress. And literally what I'm teaching people is how to be able to look at letters so they're just as comfortable as if they were on the beach in their mind's eye. Part of the way you get there is literally just by closing your eyes and palming and letting your mind and your eyes rest on the beach. Okay. And by the beach, I'm, I'm saying something that gets you to relax. Mm -hmm. Being on the beach is the most relaxing thing for everybody. So I ask a person, where have you gone on vacation that you really, really liked? For some person, some people, they could be going on a hike in, in some beautiful forest. It could be being on the beach. It could be swimming. It could be in their backyard. For everybody, it's going to be different. And this is one of the things that may individualistic as what is it that gets this person to relax? Mm -hmm. and, and so what you notice, oh, wait a minute. When I'm closing my eyes and I'm palm away, when I look at the eye chart, I feel a totally different way. And it's first learning to distinguish those two and then learning how to look at the chart. And there's a bunch of Bates techniques that you can use just to get you to relax so that you don't feel dread. So, for example, if you, if you look at the chart again on, on your screen, um, I want you to sit up uh, without your chin on, on your hand. And I want you just to rock side to side a little bit. Just rock, yeah, so that you're moving. Like this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're just rocking side to side. When you're doing that, does it look like the chart moves opposite you? Um, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. And you're actually moving a lot. Look at the edge of your screen. Mm -mm. Okay, compare the edge of your screen to whatever's in the background. Oh, yeah, it is okay. moving. Yes. Now, the reason why I had you do that is because now I'm not having you look at letters. You mm -hmm. saw movement more easily when I had your attention go away from the letters and just look at an edge compared to the background. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're seeing motion, 
you're more relaxed than what I'm going to have you do. No, I want you to stop seeing motion. I want you to make that edge not move. And I, I still have to rock back and forth, right? No, no, no. Okay. You can stop, stop rocking. Mm -hmm. Hold the edge still so that there's no movement anywhere in your visual field. I see. Now, tell me, what does that feel like? Um, it definitely, the edge doesn't feel as defined. Yes. Now, but how's your breathing when you hold the edge still? I also am not breathing. Yes. If you're not seeing motion, you're in a greater state of strain. Oh. Whereas if you see motion, what does that feel like? It definitely feels like there's more of an edge. Yeah. How's your breathing when you see the motion? Um, I was starting to breathe again, but the confound is that I was just thinking about the fact that I wasn't breathing before, but yeah, I definitely yeah. do feel. And the thing is, like you said, before when I was rocking, I was definitely breathing because the moment yeah. I stopped, I noticed something change in my body. I, was, I wasn't breathing as much. Yeah, yeah. So this, this is, and here we're having you distinguish with your eyes open what it feels like to be in a state of tension and what it feels like to be in a state of relaxation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so this is another base technique that if you just see motion, no matter where, where you're, what you're doing throughout your day, you just check if, is the world like totally still or does it look like stationary objects move when I move? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look back over at the letters, so let's, let's have you looking at the edge so that the edge of your computer screen is moving again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you rock side to side, you're going to see that edge move. Yep. Okay. And if the edge of your computer screen is moving, anything on the screen is going to be moving. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And if whatever's on your screen is moving, those letters are going to be moving. Yeah. Okay. So now it's easier for you to see the letters move, yeah? Yeah. Now it's you start noticing that, yes, the letters are moving. Yes. This is where you're more relaxed now looking at letters as opposed to if you were to hold them still, hold them still. Don't let the letters move. And your viewers will see what I'm seeing, that you get, you look more tense when you hold the letters still. Mm -hmm. What do you feel? It definitely feels tense. Yeah, yeah. So, in, so, so here I've covered two really basic, but even though they're basic, they're very, very, very valuable. Two Bates techniques, the palming, Mm -hmm. and seeing motion with your eyes closed you and palming you can imagine something pleasant and enjoyable something that gets you to relax something that gets you breathing if it gets you smiling sometimes with kids i tell them can you imagine your favorite ice cream you mm -hmm. know okay so i have the person imagining something that they really enjoy doing something that puts them at ease and comfortable that's the, one of the things that you could do with palming. And you, you saw that your vision improved when you did some palming. So you can just do palming and practicing that very regularly. Or in addition to palming, whenever you have your eyes open, you could check for motion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like most people with imperfect sight, you're going to see motion more easily when you look at non-letter objects. Mm -hmm. okay? So I had you look at the edge of your computer screen, comparing how that was moving to the background. When you did that, then you were able to bring your attention back to the letters and you saw the letters moving. Whereas initially it was hard for you to see the letters moving. Exactly. But now you know what to look for. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we've gone way past, but that's because I love doing this. Um, I wanted to give, so, so here we, we did one of the primary things that, that we wanted to cover today in, in the interview was uh, let people know that exists and that the difference between glasses or contacts is if you put on glasses or contacts and they're at the correct prescription for you, you immediately see more clearly. Mm -hmm. But glasses, exactly. don't, don't, glasses and contacts don't fix the problem. They make it worse. LASIK doesn't fix the problem either, okay? LASIK is changing your anatomy, but it's never changing what's going on in your head. It's never getting the person to relax internally. I, I've worked with dozens of people 
after they've had LASIK surgery and had problems with it. Before you do any kind of surgery, take any kind of medication, you get this handy tool called the internet, find out about the problems that people have had if they've had LASIK surgery. The guy who worked for the FDA when LASIK was approved, who's a PhD, now has a website urging the government to reverse its position on LASIK because of all the problems with it. He urges people to, to that for the federal government to stop the licensing of LASIK because the data that was given to the FDA when it was licensed was false data. Okay, this is the guy who helped approve it. Okay, uh, it hasn't been 20 years yet. It, next year, in uh, 2019, it'll be 20 years that LASIK was approved in the US. Um, but I highly, highly recommend, you know, everybody's an adult. You get to choose what kind of surgeries to have, what kind of medication to, to, to have done, whether you wear glasses, whether you wear contacts, whether to do the Bates method, get informed, okay, about whether something's gonna cause you greater harm or whether it's gonna make your vision worse, make your health worse, or whether there's really something to it. Don't just listen to your optometrist. When I first heard about Bates, I asked my optometrist about it. I said, have you ever heard of Bates? He said, yes. And I said, what do you think about it? He says, uh, it's, I forgot how he says, oh, the guy's a quack. <laughs> That's what my optometrist told me. Luckily, I didn't listen to him because he was wearing glasses. Okay. And here I am uh, over 25 years after that examination. What, after I, I found out about Bates, it took me several years before I, I found out about Bates and before I found somebody to teach me how to do Bates correctly um, and got rid of my glasses, got rid of my contacts, uh, have helped dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of people. It's, well, now it's hundreds of people after 20 years of doing this, help improve their eyesight so that they're not using glasses or contacts anymore. Um, I've actually helped surgeons, I've helped radiologists, I've given classes to MDs, nurses, chiropractors, acupuncturists, all kinds of different kinds of health professionals because they're aware that within the regular medical world, what they're taught isn't always the best. And then when they are a little bit more open-minded and they are aware, hey, sometimes my vision is better, sometimes it's worse, I wonder what's going on here, they come and find somebody like me that helps them improve their vision and get to the point where they don't need glasses or contacts anymore. Yep. Wow. Yeah, very, very glad to have been with you here today, Jerry, to share this. Um, I'm going to check in with you so that I can get a copy of this and get it up on my website of, of our interview today um, and to be able to share. So I, I highly encourage we, uh, you know what? We for, totally forgot to ask, uh, uh, answer questions. Uh, let's, let's um, before we do that, telling people about my website, centervision.com, I, I typically give a free uh, introductory class once a month. People could go on there. They can get on my newsletter, which is a free newsletter that I send out periodically. It has articles on Bates and my commentary on those. Um, I'm always giving tips on how to improve vision. And especially after people have taken classes with me, they have a much, much better idea of how to practice on their own. Mm -hmm. um, but let's go ahead to your, your viewers and, and answer any questions that people might have. Yeah, so one of the good questions, actually there were two very good questions that I've seen in the live chat. One very good question someone asked is, is squinting bad for you? Yes, squinting is making an effort to clear things up. So, uh, and, and part of what happens when a person is in a state of imperfect eyesight, they're in sympathetic response. Sympathetic response is fight or flight. I gotta get away from this situation. It's like being a, 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 a zebra out on the African plains. You hear, the zebra hears a branch crack, and it's on alert because is that a lion or, or a, a jaguar or not a jaguar, a, a leopard, a lion or a leopard that's gonna eat me right now, okay? That's sympathetic response. Humans as another species of animals on the planet have sympathetic response as a biological function to protect us, okay? We go into an emergency mode in our body that I gotta run or I gotta fight right now because my life is on the line. The funny thing with imperfect sight is that we have that experience when we're looking at letters, we go into sympathetic response. When we're in sympathetic response, one of the things that we do is we try to clear up what we're looking at and we'll squint. And when we're squinting, we're making an effort and we're maintaining, we're keeping up the state of sympathetic response. We're keeping up the state of mental strain and we're just teaching ourselves 
that in order to see clearly, I have to squint. At some point, your squinting isn't enough, and you go and you get corrective lenses. You tell your optometrist or your ophthalmologist, hey, I, you know, I can't see the blackboard. I can't see my computer screen. I can't see signs when I'm driving as clearly as I used to. And they end up putting glasses of contacts on you. And as soon as they do that, you start going down the path of doing incorrect stuff. You're teaching your body how to stay in a state of strain and see clearly through the corrective lens. So squinting, yes, squinting is mm -hmm. the wrong thing to do. Mm -hmm. Instead, if you find yourself, as soon as you catch yourself squinting, go to palming or check to see if you can see motion. Ah, I see. see what you're teaching is alternate ways to relax instead yes. of oh, yes. even more freak out mode, which is what squinting yes. is. I'm teaching people how to steer their mind on the freeway of life. Exactly. Yeah. What's another question? What was another so question? The other was? question, another very good question someone asked is sunning, sun gazing. Basically, I know Bates gets a lot, a lot of misinformation on the Bates method about that, yes. about yeah. whether it's, I, again, um, I'm just, these were three things I've seen people portray this as. One is um, you palm and face the sun. So that's one that I've seen a website describe sunning. Another yeah, that's not, is, yeah, that's not that's not bait sunning. That's somebody's interpretation of yeah. bait sunning. That's, and then that's another. Wrong. Let me finish my three interpretations. So, sure. so another one that I've heard is look at the sun during sunrise or sunset. So when it's not too when it's not too um, bright or whatever. And of course, the yeah. third one just look at the sun. So those are three yeah. interpretations of that. So someone was asking about that. Um, what about is the actual? Sunny. If if you have imperfect sight and you look at the sun, you're you're gonna strain, okay? So looking at the sun when you don't know what to do is gonna make you strain more, okay? So this is like what I mentioned when I first started improving my eyesight and I, I wanted to do palming and I was trying really, really hard to be a perfect palmer and my vision would get worse. Most people are gonna strain when they're looking at the sun. So I tell people, don't look at the sun because you don't know what you're doing. Um, Bates did write a lot of articles, wrote, put in his book, different ways to do sunning. Most people who have imperfect sight and read his articles or read his book are gonna try sunning and they're gonna do it wrong and they're gonna cause problems and they're gonna scare themselves and they're gonna scare their friends and family and they're gonna tell people, oh, you shouldn't look at the sun. And I tell people, don't look at the sun if you don't know what you're doing, because it's just gonna make your vision worse. So don't, so don't do any Bates technique, especially looking at the sun, if you don't know what you're doing, okay? And for even the, the vast majority of people that I work with to improve their eyesight, I never tell anybody to look at the sun because most people are not gonna know how to do it. And and so avoid looking at the sun to improve your eyesight in general. Yeah, you're, you're probably going to cause problems. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and the final question that was a really good one that I saw is, does the Bates method help with someone, let's say, who's cross-eyed? So that's what they don't. If they do the Bates method, they won't have to do one of those corrective surgeries that like reattaches the the muscles yes. or whatever. Yes, absolutely. So Bates writes about this extensively. When Bates first started working on uh, uh, helping people with their eyesight, well, he actually noticed that when kids relaxed, their vision got better. He noticed that with kids who came in that were crossed eye or had a wandering eye, when they would relax, their, their eyes would line up correctly. So if you think about it, if, if one muscle is pulling too much, if one muscle is straining, if the person is under some state of muscular or mental tension, the body isn't functioning correctly. In the same way that you noticed that your breathing wasn't correct when uh, you were under strain, with some people, the muscles on the, around the eyes could pull one eye or both eyes so that people have crossed eyes. Sometimes people have divergent squint where one eye wanders out and is looking out to the left or to the right. When I was a kid, they used to call it somebody who's cockeyed. Cockeyed, that, that's right. I know people yeah, yeah. have that. Yeah. All of that can be cleared up by doing Bates techniques. I've helped mm -hmm. people with that. I've helped people with nystagmus, which is when they have like a jittering, bouncing of their eyes. With Bates techniques, you can clear up myopia, presbyopia, uh, uh, astigmatism, 
cataracts, glaucoma, macular degeneration. I've helped people with detached retinas. I've ha helped people who had gotten, uh, one guy that I worked with, he had uh, had an, a, an injury in his eye where he had been working in a machine shop and he got a, 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 met, a metal splinter from some machines that he was working with. Metal splinter hit his eye, he wasn't wearing goggles, got a metal splinter got the splinter out but now he had this trauma he had both a scarring on his eye but he also had a mental trauma that he was afraid that something like that was happening so when a person's in a state of fear and they have a physical trauma their mind is going to be in the state of imperfect eyesight mm -hmm. and so it was a matter of helping and the person get out of that state so yes short answer Yes, this helps with crossed eyes and with any kind of divergent or convergent squint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it helps with all of those. Any That's other awesome. questions? Yeah, um, I think those are the those are the best questions I've I've seen so far. There there were other ones, but some of them were making jokes about the Bates method, like the <laughs> making puns. So those were really questions that just they were right, really just right. kind of funny. Yeah, you get a lot of that on YouTube, and yeah. I, and I totally understand that. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. there's. I've given classes where MDs joke around about mm -hmm. the, the, the Bates method because they don't understand it. Yeah. If you check online, if you check on the Wikipedia uh, entry for Dr. Bates, you'll, it was written by some MDs or, and some uh, people that work in the, in the medical profession that don't understand Bates at all. Mm -hmm. I would be happy to walk those people for free through some Bates sessions so that they could experience their vision get better and um, I'm always happy to work with medical professionals, optometrists, ophthalmologists, surgeons, anybody, so that they could have the experience of their vision getting better using Bates techniques mm -hmm. um, and, and to, so that they have an experience that is separate from what they've been taught in a medical school or what they've been taught as optometrists. Mm -hmm. um, you can improve your eyesight and get it back to normal or better than normal using Bates. A person has to have time, okay? because you have to practice. It's like learning a language or learning to play an instrument or learning to drive a car. You gotta do it regularly, okay? So, but it's an individual choice. I'm okay with people wearing glasses or contacts or getting LASIK. You're not gonna get out of your state of mental strain by doing those things, but your memory gets better and your vision gets better when you do Bates techniques such that you're, so that you're relaxing and it's just a wonderful wonderful way of changing what's going on in your head and improving your life yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what i really like about this method the way you're teaching it is that for anyone who tries any of these techniques either way one you're becoming more mindful and two you're becoming more relaxed so yeah. again i don't know if this is going to work for me but yeah. in my opinion even if i learn to be more mindful and more relaxed i think that's pretty cool it already worked for you, Jerry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we already had your vision improve a couple of lines. Um, um, but you're right. You're right. Um, when I had, when I, I actually have given this course at a Buddhist temple to monks and nuns there because uh, they're practicing this, these incredible feats of meditation and everything. But the majority of them wear glasses, so they asked me to come and start giving classes there. And we got to. Uh, when I was I was going there regularly, one of the monks was able to go without his glasses and started doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just a matter of practice. And one of the nuns there mentioned one of the last times I was over there at the temple, she mentioned uh, to to the 97 year old lady who was there taking classes. She said, "Yeah, it's just a matter of practice." That particular nun doesn't have the time to put into practice to the Bates method, and so she's okay with you know going with glasses. That's why it's a personal choice. Um, but if you want to improve your eyesight so that you don't use glasses or contacts or so that you don't get LASIK surgery, there's a way to do that. And I'm happy to, to, to help people with that. They can go, uh, if people have further questions, they can go on to my website, centeredvision.com, which I'm sure you're gonna put into your, onto the YouTube page. Yeah, it's right. uh, on, yeah. And um, pe people can uh, send me an email through there and they can contact me. Uh, they can call the office where, where I work at here to set up an appointment if they wanted to do something like that. But if they have questions, they can send, send me an email through my website uh, and, and get further information. And that, that's, that's a way to, to find out whether this is something that's, that's going to be uh, the best choice for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And yeah. one final question that um, one of the audience members asked, Besides the one Bates book that you recommended, are there any other good Bates books out there or is it just the one that you recommended? 
So there's the Bates book. There's um, there's the it, and it's called uh, again for those people to, that had tuned in later the Bates method for better eyesight without glasses. That's the abridged version of his original book. It's not the complete version of his original book. Um, there is another thing that they can get, and and I'm and I'm conflicted about telling people about it. Bates published a magazine for 11 years from uh, 1919 to 1930. That Bates magazine, the, it's called Better Eyesight, uh, uh, Bates's uh, Better Eyesight magazine. You can find uh, a book that is titled The Complete Bates Better Eyesight magazine. Mm -hmm. That is a false title. It's not complete. And many of the articles are changed in there. And uh, some of them totally exclude uh, some of the articles that Bates wrote in there. This person abridged ba the Better Eyesight magazine by Bates. It, it's, it's um, um, you, you guys can find this online easily enough, so I'm not gonna tell you who, who, who put it together. Um, that is a really good source because it has very short and concise articles. Mm -hmm. um, you can try those, but again, if you read any Bates, including his Better Eyesight magazine, if you do any kind of Bates technique, check to see if it gets you to relax. First, does it feel better? And does your vision actually get better when you do the technique? If you're not having both of those things happen, you feel better and your vision gets better, don't do the technique. Don't, don't do a technique because Bates said to do it, okay? And it's much, much easier to have somebody like me help a person so that they're doing a Bates technique correctly. That's really the best way. It's cheaper to, to get the Bates book. It's cheaper to even get that um, uh, paper uh, paperback version of the Better Eyesight magazine. But, you know, it's whatever whatever works for you. Yeah, make sure that it works. Make sure that you feel better, you can be, <laughs> that you physically feel better, your mind feels better, and that your vision's getting better when you're doing what you're doing. That you're not trying, that you're not making an effort, that you're not gritting your th teeth while you're doing a Bates technique. Yeah. And so something, <laughs> something I just want to add to what you're saying, this is something for my audience too. Um, in another talk I did with another guy who talked about improving vision in China, for example, we all did these exercises to relax the muscles around our face. And I think yeah. I'm just thinking from a Chinese medicine perspective, it probably had some of the same ultimate goals. It's like just to relax the mind Relax oh, yeah. the mind, maybe it relaxes the muscles potentially inside the eyes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so so in the Orient, because you have yoga and because you have Tai Chi and because you have Qi Gun, you have uh, uh, Chinese acupressure uh, and acupuncture techniques, a lot of those things are ways of getting the person to be at ease. On my website, one of the very first things that I have is that there's a Taoist saying that says, if you have a disease, do not try to cure it. Find your center and you will be healed. That's why my website is called Centered Vision. It's referring to finding your center inside yourself where you're comfortable, you're at ease. And when you find that, when you're doing that, your body fixes itself, not only of your vision, but of all kinds of other stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So I think... As a follow-up, maybe one time you and I should be together and we should talk about this. That could be a, a follow-up video in the future, maybe sure. in a month and two months yeah, or something. Yeah. If That'd my audience, for my audience, if you visit the website or even if you decide to take a class with Carlos or something, let me know. We can we can do like a group hangout with people who've tried to clash or something like that. That would be yeah. another cool idea. Okay. I'd be happy to do something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so okay. for those of you watching, um, Carlos, I can end it here. If you have anything else to add, if not, we can do another hangout in the future. But for those of you watching, this was Carlos. And I have already a link to his website in the description. Once this hangout goes live, I will I'll pin also a comment so that way you guys can go there in case you guys don't see it in the description. Some people don't, they don't check the description. They only check the comments. But either yeah. way, you guys will see his website. And Carlos, feel free to interact with my audience directly if you if you have a YouTube account. If not, you can join my Discord and you can talk to people there. So either way, um, sure. people get to reach you if if they're too shy to contact you directly. But I'm sure, guys, talk to Carlos directly if you want to. Email him, do whatever. He's nice.
Yeah. Yeah. Well, ha very happy to work with people that way. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. One thing I might do when this hangout goes, uh, once it's done being live and it just gets uploaded is there's a way I can shorten the beginning. So, you know, we had a little technical difficulties in the beginning. I might shorten that and then I'll just yeah. start it when the technical difficulties get solved. So that's something that might happen when you see the video replayed in the future. That's fine. That's, mm -hmm. that's a good idea. Yeah. Edit out, edit out. Yeah. All the, all the get ready, get go. Exactly. Get edit out the part where, you know, the picture was just, just you know, you were <laughs> getting stuck on screen and stuff like yeah. that. And you, you might be able to edit out also when uh, uh, we turned off my, my camera so that we could get a better feed. Yeah. Um, and so, so there were some parts where my voice was going out probably. Exactly. Or, 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 so or, or. I'm thinking I'll find when, when we figured out that the turning off your camera stopped the voice from going out and we'll start there. I think because the meat of it was there anyways. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. So yeah. is there, is there an event this Wednesday also that you're hosting? Yeah. Um, okay. actually, yeah for, for people who are here in Southern California, um, I actually have, a. Uh, um, I, I, I organize a couple of different meetup groups on, on meetup.com. Um, one, one of the meetup groups is uh, Chinese and English language exchange meetup in San Gabriel. And uh, if they join that group, um, we're actually just having a, a potluck barbecue over at a friend's house in Pasadena. And people are welcome to come to that. Um, um, they can check. Uh, that, that's probably the, the best uh, meetup site to check it on. Um, but they could also uh, check with me by email also uh, uh, if they want to get into some meetup groups. And also uh, another thing that they could check on my website is when I'm giving the free introductory class. And I, I, the next one's going to be July 24th, probably up in Pasadena. And mm -hmm. so they could check on my website to get on that, or they could email me to get uh, the information on the location and the time for that uh, free intro that I'll be giving. Okay. Sounds on. good. Yeah. Okay, so okay. Um, I can put some of those links there too. Okay, okay, I'll send that to you, to, to you, Jerry. Definitely. Okay, perfect. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow up with you also as far as being able to put this onto my YouTube channel mm -hmm. too. Once you have exactly. it edited. Yeah. Okay. Very good to talk to you today, Jerry. I'm I'm glad we we got through the technical difficulties and we were able to help help you with your eyesight so that you saw when you did palming in in a in a in a particular way and that you were able to see motion. And hopefully um, we've helped uh, some people out there in your audience understand a little bit more about how Bates works. And maybe if they were doing it with us as I was walking you through it, maybe some of them noticed that their vision improved also. Yeah, and one thing for those of you watching, if you do try this, remember you're cupping your eyes. Don't actually put any pressure on your eyes. That's not good for the eyes. So always yeah. remember that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, for those of you watching, this was Carlos. Visit his website, and when this gets public on YouTube again, I will make sure to make sure to put more links, whatever. So, Carlos, thanks again. No, no problem, Jerry. Happy to be with you today. Have a awesome. good one. Have a good one, everyone watching. Thank you so much, guys. Talk more in the description, in the live chat, in the Discord, or in the comments. Bye bye. Bye bye.